I'm just getting ready to take the e-bike out for a ride this morning. I've been riding it every morning since I got it. I absolutely love it. If you've been thinking about getting an e-bike for yourself, then you might want to come along on this video because I'm going to show you what it's capable of, how much fun it is, and how to operate it when you're riding it to get the most out of it. Well, this has become kind of a morning ritual for me. The thing I'm liking is I don't have to put any stress on my knee because I can adjust the amount of electric or motor assist that I'm, that I'm getting. So I never have to push hard with my legs. Well, yesterday the winds were gusting 80 miles an hour here. About 45 miles to the west of us, they got a 117 mile an hour gust. It's supposed to do that again today. See, the nice thing is if I get tired of pedaling, I can just use the throttle and continue on. Now, for any of you that haven't ridden a bike with disc brakes and you're just used to the old, the old style brakes, the disc brakes are really smooth and effective. These are mechanical disc brakes and a lot of bikes these days now have hydraulic disc brakes. So stopping is a lot easier than it used to be back when we were younger. Got a slight uphill here. Now, if you're wondering why Linda isn't out riding is because most of these bikes are too big for her. She's only about four foot 11. I kept waiting for her to grow, but she just doesn't. There are a couple of e-bikes made, like uh, the Rad bikes. Uh, they have a smaller, a smaller one, and it's uh, full-size people can ride it too. But the seat and and the handlebars will adjust for a rider of Linda's stature. Also, electric. Um, e-bike company has a bike like that also I'm trying to get my hands on one for Linda to try and for all you people that, uh, that are small you might appreciate a bike like that it's just as fast and just as powerful as this bike but it's smaller good morning Oh yeah, it's windy. Now I get to ride against that headwind. ride down this way a little further just for fun let's see what this reader board up here says I love the history here
Hidden Falls. This is where, of course, Lewis and Clark came through back in 1805. Lewis said, I had scarcely infixed my eyes from this pleasing object, Rainbow Falls, before I discovered another fall above, above at a distance of a half a mile. Thus invited, I did not once think of returning, but hurried thither to amuse myself with this newly discovered object. I found this to be a cascade of about 14 feet, possessing a perpendicular pitch of about six feet. This was tolerably regular, stretching across the river from bank to bank, where it was about a quarter mile wide. Captain Meriwether Lewis, June 14, 1805. Pretty cool. Yeah, there was a series of waterfalls on the river here. Right ahead of me to my right, to the right there is uh, uh, Rainbow Dam, I believe. Oh, where am I going now? morning. One thing about Montana though, the wind never stops blowing on, on this east side of the Rocky Mountains. So that kind of puts a damper on camping. It's one thing for it to be cold. It's another thing for it to be cold and windy. All right. Better slow down a bit. Now on this hill, in level four, I'm hardly doing anything at all pedaling. I think I'll stop here and warm up a bit. Oh yeah, getting a little chilly. My lips are starting to freeze. <laughs> This is Giant Springs State Park. I've had y'all down here before. It's just a pretty place with a fish hatchery. Still beautiful. I could have spent a bunch of money and bought a regular steel rack from Hemiway from this. They make a really nice strong one. It comes with a small rack underneath here from the factory. And that's a $7 milk crate which I just put on with some uh, tie wraps, fastened it down. It's, it's, it's on there good. And it's just perfect for groceries, absolutely perfect. At some point we'll, we should talk about um, bike locks. I think that's a subject for another video though. What a beautiful place, nice morning. This looks like the way, yeah.
Now you can see the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center over there. That's a great museum. Man, all I hear is the wind whistling through my ears. This is a steep hill. We'll see if the bike can just do it without me pedaling. And against the headwind. <laughs> Yeah, 15 miles an hour up this hill, <laughs> not bad. <laughs> I went a lot further this morning. So far I've done just over nine miles. Yeah, I had no idea I was gonna like this, this uh, Hemiway Escape or any e-bike for that matter. <laughs> I really had no idea. But it turns out I just love them. I usually use a throttle on this one to get me going from a stop sign. And then I start in pedaling. Pedaling every morning has been really good for me. I can feel the difference in my legs. I just love all the old houses. This town's got some mansions in it, ones that date way back to the late 1800s. I'd like to see those too. Smells like somebody's making bacon and eggs. If I could figure out which house it is, maybe I could stop for breakfast. Hmm. Ah, darn it, they're closed. This used to be called Best Donuts. It's, uh, it's still run by the same people, and it's the best donuts that I know of. I told them they should change the name to World's Best Donuts. These people know how to make donuts. Let's take a break here. I was gonna put a bag of donuts in the basket. <laughs> it's perfect for a big bag of donuts. This uh, donut shop is run by an older Korean couple. Uh, today is Tuesday. They've been, looks like they've been closed for a little while. I hope they're just off on vacation someplace nice and warm. I know they sell out their donuts by about 1030 every morning. <laughs> I, it's fun to uh, chat with the lady about Korean movies. Did you know that Koreans make really good movies? I mean, they, you know, have you ever watched an Australian movie? Those are always pretty good too, well done. Well, so are the Korean movies. One that comes to mind is called Cast Away on the Moon. And it's about a young man. He's in a business suit with the movie starting out. I think he gets fired from his job. Don't remember, but I know that his girlfriend dumped him. He decides to commit suicide. So he goes to a high overpass in his city and there's a big river that runs through the city and he jumps off the overpass and uh, should have died, but he wakes up on the shore of this island. Now this island is in the middle of the river in the middle of the city and he's stuck there. He tries waving to people and shouting, but nobody can see him or notices him. <laughs> and. He uh, tries to find ways to survive because days turn into weeks and weeks turn into months and months turn into, I don't know, a long time. He was out there for a long time surviving on his uh, wits, which he didn't have very many of those. <laughs> in the movie, there's a young girl that's a shut-in and she lives in a high rise on the shore of the river and she never goes out, she's afraid. 
never leaves her room. And she has a telescope and she notices, one day she notices him. And he's been out there for quite a while at this time. Anyways, it's the interaction between this young girl and this young man and how they eventually notice each other or how he eventually comes to notice her and how they how they manage to communicate. Of course, he doesn't have a cell phone <laughs> that works or anything like that. It's how they communicate and how in the end of the movie they finally get together and how she finally leaves her room. Anyways, it was a fun movie. It was kind of funny in places, very interesting. Of course, it's in Korean, but there's very little dialogue, so you don't have to read too many subtitles below. Cast Away on the Moon, I think you might like it. Well, I think I'll get back on the bike and ride. Just a little riding tip, in case you decide to get an e-bike. As long, this one has a brake, what they call a brake cutoff. You'll see two wires going into the brake. One is the cable for the brake. Some of these have uh, hydraulic brakes, this one doesn't. And the other one is a wire, and it sent, both of the brake handles have that, and it senses when you, uh, when you put on the brake, on either side, and it automatically cuts the motor out so it can't overpower your braking. Now this bike has a cadence sensor. It senses that you're turning the pedal. Within about a half a turn of the pedal, the motor will automatically kick in. So I don't have to use the throttle if I don't want to. I can just start pedaling, and with about a half a pedal stroke, the motor kicks in. Or I can just crank the throttle and go, which is what I usually do. And I just leave this in high gear over here. That house there on the corner that I just passed has a ballroom upstairs. There it is. <laughs> This is a real beautiful avenue when the leaves are on the trees. And not too many people in the park today. Except for the geese. It's one thing about the geese is all the geese, all the goose droppings everywhere. Boy, do they make a mess. Underneath old Burlington Northern here. This is the Missouri River. Flows, starts out in southwestern, the southwestern corner of Montana. Flows all the way to the Mississippi and St. Louis. So this water goes all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. There's a trail up here I've only been on once. Go try it. I don't remember where this trail goes. I know where it kind of ends up, but I don't remember how it gets there. Looks like the main trail goes this way. Well, that's nice. I didn't have to cross at the uh, light down there. Cool. Now where to? 
I think the rest of the way goes down along the river here. Yeah, having an e-bike has opened up a whole new world for, world for me, I'll tell you. I used to, uh, in this kind of dreary, chilly weather that we get, we get a lot of sunny days here in, in central Montana, though. Our, our Februarys are like bright sunshine, clear and bright, and 20 below zero. <laughs> That's February in, Mon in central Montana says here we have a winter weather advisory moderate expected hmm today starting now until tomorrow at tomorrow morning snow expected two to four inches hmm winds as high as 25 well, it's nice now, except it's cloudy, but it's very nice out. Oh, that's right. This trail I'm on is on the old railway right away. And that's what this boxcar up here symbolizes. Boxcar and a caboose. Well, this is the, we're coming up on the uppermost dam on this stretch of river. I think there's five dams totally. And this was the Great Falls. You can still see falls though in the springtime below these dams and going over the rocks is quite spectacular. I'll show you what I mean. This here is talking about the copper mill, which is right on the other side of the river. Directly across from us was a huge stack, which I think they um, demolished in 1998, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. But a lot of the copper for World War II came out of that mill on the other side of the river there. So you see when the dam is releasing major amounts of water in the springtime, this is all white water down through here. It's uh, big plumes of spray and everything coming over the rocks. It's a nice little area, come hang out. So the trail I'm riding on was part of the Great Northern Railway. Well, the bathroom was spotless. That's always a nice surprise. Doggone, I think I see some sunshine. I do. In honor of Lewis and Clark and Sacagawea. You know, I'll bet they stood right here on this bluff where this statue is at. Seriously, you can see all up and down the river.
Yeah, you can bet they stood right here. Sometimes it's just nice to just hit the throttle and cruise. Then I got to remind myself I'm not here for exercise. <laughs> On um, when I pedal like this and don't use the throttle very much, only periodically, uh, I can get 35 miles on a battery charge, on a full battery. They say up to 45, but that's on a level track if you pedal like heck. <laughs> so it's kind of uh, not very representative of what the actual mileage you can get on a full charge is. But 35 miles, uh, pedal assisting like this, because I did that last week. And uh, at least 25 miles without pedaling at all, just using just the throttle. And if you stop and think about it, that's, that's a long way. <laughs> well, I'm getting close to home, so I think I'll end this video right here. Thanks a lot for coming along, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. See you around.